We created a one-of-a-kind light fixture using translucent epoxy and a hollowed log. Learn right now how to apply epoxy to three-dimensional objects. We're going to demonstrate how to keep the epoxy translucent. We're going to show how to apply it by hand and how to sand. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. So you are doing some log cabin lampshades. The thing that bugs me about the cabin is there's like plastic fixtures and things like that and there's all this great natural right. stuff and, and I get so excited because I look at, I watch the insiders, uh -huh. I watch your videos and I say, I want to make some stuff. I, yeah. I don't want to have plastic toilet paper holders. <laughs> right. I, so I get all these ideas. I see the rotten logs. I, I'm obsessed. And I found this, this piece of wood and there was a shelf hidden in it. Yes, there is. So Dang. I, I decided well, I, have to, I needed a shelf for cell phones. Because you go to the cabin, there's no cell service. So you got to get rid of the cell phones. I love it. So and that's where it goes. Cell phone goes here and there's a charger right over here in case you want to take pictures. Uh-huh. But you don't talk on that. Because no longer is it a phone. Now it's a camera. That's all it is. That's cool. So you tell me about the cracks in it. We're going to glue it all up, but you want to enhance those cracks. I thought if I could open these up a little bit, kind of kind of like what we did with the other one. Okay. It'll have a little bit more color. Now this is going to be your light. So you have a sconce light on the wall. This is going over and you want light to come through these, but be diffused. Yeah. The knot hole is going to be awesome. That's what I think. That it's is kind of like a whale eye, doesn't it? Yeah. That is cool. You can see right through it. So whoever's hiding behind your light is going to see. I think what we'll do first is we're going to... We're going to mock this up. So we're going to have to attach this. We'll pour all the color, let it set, and then we'll sand it back flush. Why don't we do your cracks first, open those up, and then we'll start building okay. these forms. Yeah, look at the grain in there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, goodness. That's gorgeous. Beautiful. That's, That's fantastic. That'll be cool. I, li I like that you're opening that up. And we're going to do the same thing here. Okay, we got some stilts, right? Just something to okay. hold things together. All right. Beautiful. That's sweet. So now we just tape it up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll take it over here. We'll tape it up. All right. I think we're ready to take this over and pour it. So we have that electric blue. See the name? Yeah. I love it. Doesn't it look like Crater Lake? It does. So I think I'm going to go make it like a couple of door stops. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. There we go. We got our own door stops. Just okay. cut it right through the middle and it'll tear easy. Yep. And then I'll hand you some pieces. That's a pro tip right there. That is a pro tip. Cut the Tyvek tape right in the middle. Or use your teeth. Yeah, that seems really stable. Though. Okay. I like how stable we made this. Mm -hmm. You want to start with a good foundation so when you're pouring, you're not worried something's going to come apart. All right. So we're going to use our casting epoxy. The casting epoxy is designed to be poured um, thicker. Our normal countertop epoxy goes one eighth of an inch. In this case, you could probably use any of our products because it's not this giant amount, but, but even this crack, it might generate too much heat. So we're gonna err on the side of caution, but we've had a lot of guys use our countertop stuff for cracks all the time, no big deal. So okay. when you're doing a river table, anything with mass, for sure casting epoxy so we did a big burl and our first layer was really opaque and then after that it was almost water clear with just a little metallic oh, so it was super so deep and then it stopped oh, yeah, yeah. and it looked like a lake that you're looking into oh, how cool. i have a picture taking the scouts and i did a backflip into crater lake off a of big rock oh, how cool. i haven't seen that i'll show it to you wow that's it so you can hardly even see the color in it, can't you? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna add more. It's just so easy to overdo it. Okay. We'll stir it really good. I like it. Okay, so that's the color that we chose right there. After we get this one done, we're gonna add more because we want that one opaque. Right. Pour about a quarter inch in there, and then we'll torch it quickly, and we'll do another quarter inch. Oh, that's going to be really neat. All right, keep going. Look at the metallic in it. Well, look at the color of the oh, wood. That is Bring so the color awesome. Of the wood out. That's cool. Oh, I love it. That's yeah, I cool. Think, I think the, the color is going to be just right. And then once that thing dries, it's going to be rock solid. It's not going to come apart no. at all. Mm -mm. It'll come apart at the wood long before it will come apart there. I am loving this, though. 
<laughs> I knew you'd like that blue. Oh, yeah, I love that blue. I love ocean blue, but that one makes ocean blue look tame. And I know you normally use a drill. Can you over stir it? I mean, boy, um, too long. This, if you're just going to get lots of air in it. And, oh, okay. and uh, it's hard to get deep. So if we had a, we're going to watch what happens when I torch. All the air is coming up to the top. Yeah. Watch how it clears this up. So that's how easy it is. Oh, wow. So the, the point is, is if we were really a stubborn bubble that we couldn't get out that way and it was low, I can heat the tip of a Phillips head cheap screwdriver, torch, get in there and it'll pop it. Oh, yeah. cool. Another pro tip. Pro hot tip. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I love So this is how you could tell too how transparent or opaque it is. So you can see it, you barely see the lines there and where it's a little thicker. So when we're doing a counter, and we want a color to hide, we'll make sure it hides our paint stick. We do the same thing, about a quarter inch? Mm-hmm. Fill her up. Now, wow. the only bad part about this is we gotta wait till tomorrow. I know, I know. Next day, huh? But but the audience doesn't. <laughs> I've got my stone coat uniform on today. I like. love it, man. Look at that. Where'd you get that shirt? I Isn't gotta it find great? your tailor, man. Yeah. You, you left yesterday. We had some extra epoxy left over in this cup, okay. and we had a little leak. Yeah. We kind of saw it right at the end. We, we were pushing that tape, and so that's a good test. That HVAC tape, it works good, but it started a leak on this one end. And so what we did is we actually lifted this up and applied Tyvek tape while the epoxy is wet. But just understand, we lifted it up, we applied Tyvek, and then I just said, you know what, why not use the rest? Because this is a shelf. It doesn't need to be translucent, right. so I just poured the rest out and we had no more leak anyway. So it stayed in and you really liked the color. What yeah, do you think? I think that's gonna look great on the side to see the, the, the colored contrast with, uh -huh. the, uh, with the natural wood. That side is gonna show up to the right. audience in your kitchen. You're gonna have this on like an end, end panel of a cabinet. Correct, yeah, this will be against the wall so nobody will see that, but uh, this side will be open. I figured I'd take my glasses and uh, stick it in there while it's you on the could, wall or, or something. Or you could hide like a little uh, pea shooter in there. Something. <laughs> <laughs> it's been about 24 hours to the T. Almost. Let's do the yeah. next step. Okay. It's killing me, Mike. I want to see through the translucent <laughs> part. You Come on, can't we just peek? Yes. Let's mix it up. All right. All right, you ready for this? Let's add a little color. That's a little. Try that. Is that stuff actually ground up minerals? Yeah, it's mica. It's probably about, is that about right? Yeah, I think that's about right. Do you like that? I do, I love okay. it. Okay, okay. <coughs> it looks sure? like, it looks like, we can mix like, up clear and then kind of dilute no, 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 it. No, 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 it looks good. That's cool. It's going into the eyeball. Very beautiful. So we didn't get any bubbles oh, in that crack. So if you're doing a river table where you don't want bubbles that kind of form on your river, you really, especially where the bark is, when they do put a true live edge into itself, you'll get bubbles if you don't seal those. So guys, if you have bubbles at this point, don't sit here with a torch and every time that bubble arises and wait. It's pointless. Let it do its thing. Let it start to set up. I could come back in about six, seven hours and oh, hit, wow. hit those bubbles and they'll still pop. Um, if you babysit it that way and you get them to pop and not form again, fine. But you could always come back with a drill, drill out a bubble and fill it with clear and you can hide it. Let's take the tape off. I'm going to see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so tomorrow, guys, we're gonna come back. We're gonna take all the tape off. We'll sand these. We'll get them ready to butter the entire outside with color, sand that flush, and it's time to do clear. Excellent, I'm all so right. excited, I can't not, wait. Not a lot of work. It's fun, it's oh, fun, yeah. but. So this is the hardest part, is waiting. Right, I, I know. Wait. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Got some pieces here. I think we'll. Unveiling. I think we'll sand right here. Let's just. Right here? Let's just take it apart right here. You can see what we did already, the first pour, it was pretty transparent. We added some more, so I'm interested to see how much that light comes through, but I think it'll come through cool. That's awesome, and then this one's really trans or opaque, uh -huh. and we're gonna just take the tape off now. It's gonna be hard to take the tape off some places, so wherever it doesn't come off easy, we'll just sand it off. Okay. So we'll do our best and forget yeah. the rest. Okay. All right, let's do it.
We use a 50 grit metal sanding disc attached to our angle grinder to make short work of removing any tape residue. That's elite. Oh, that's sick. Dang. You want me to grind any of that out to make it more light? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, let me do a little bit. Okay. See if that helps at all. I think it's great, just the way it is. You like it? Oh, I love it. That's so pretty. I love it. All right, I'm gonna clean this up and then sand with regular sandpaper. Okay. And then we're ready. Is that better? Yeah. 60 grit. All right, I really want to see how that looks. Look at that, that's great. <laughs> I love it. That's, I love the way this turned out. That's too cool. That's sick. I love it. Now, are we going to butter in that vibrant blue now, like the same color? or what? Yeah, that's what we talked about. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I can't wait to see the color come back in these logs. I really like this, too. I do, too. That's cool. Yeah. Let's right do now. this. Cool. Let's go put some blue in it. Okay, some more blue. After mixing our quick coat at a one-to-one -one ratio, we'll add our epoxy thickener and some more metallic powder. All right, just work that in, yeah, and I'll work in mine. So can I, if I have excess, can I go to another spot? Oh yeah, okay. see what I'm doing here? Oh yeah, you're just doing the whole thing. Should we pin this or something? Probably should. Why don't we go take that in the shop and pin nail that right now? Let's make this batch a little thicker. That's a paste. Well, as long as we get it on there, it's fine. Need more? I'm just finding any little micro crack and filling it in. I think we're good, brother. We'll let that dry. We'll come back, sand it all off, and start our clear coats. Excellent. That's an art project for kindergartners right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mentality. These are dry. Yeah. They're hard as a rock. Yeah. We're ready to go. We're going to sand it off. You called it the... The unveiling. The unveiling. I want to see the I want to see the wood and the uh, the color and the cracks. Yeah, this uh, this looks like we had no idea what we were doing, right? I, I, I didn't. I call it a Smurf log. You know, I've done this before on our 3D epoxy driftwood, and I got into it. I was going to be really clean with it. That's your intention going in, and then you're like, well, uh, this isn't so clean. And here we go. Let's sand it off and see what we got underneath. Excellent. And I'd grab a couple of 60 grit and we'll finish at 220 grit. Overfilling all the cracks and crevices with tinted blue epoxy ensures that you don't leave anything unfilled. It creates a great finish. You just need to remove all the excess at this stage. What do you think? <laughs> Those are... Those are awesome, man. I bring you firewood and we make something artistic out of it. Oh, these are just, thera they're therapeutic to work on. Oh my goodness, you know, yeah. I was gonna ask you, why, if we we're putting epoxy on it, why, why put the finer sandpaper? Well, when you stay at 60, yeah. a lot of times you can still pick up curly cues and things like uh, that. Because when you wet something out, it shows everything as opposed to right now, the little stuff you're not gonna see. So I know okay. if I go up higher than I need to, I'm pretty dang safe. Plus it seems like the epoxy lays out smoother and uh, there's less sanding between coats when you start with a higher fine, okay. finer grit. So let's go apply some clear on this. Now we're gonna get some color back. Yes. We're gonna mix up some quick coat. We don't need a lot because we're just doing seal coats. I'll do a couple of seal coats and the thinner that you go, the less it's gonna sag and create drips. Excellent. I like to take part B, put it in first, and then get it off my table. That way, if I got distracted, I don't grab part B and do it again. So that's probably a good idea. I've done that before. Yeah. Your stuff doesn't dry very fast. <laughs> I was so excited, it came back and not much progress after 24 hours. <laughs> and once we get the, uh, the clear on there, it's all gonna just pop, isn't it? Oh yeah. The colors from the wood and the colors from the blue. Yes. Depending on the project, both hand mixing and drilling slowly work fine to keep your epoxy project crystal clear. <laughs> that is so cool. Look at the reds in the, in the wood. Oh, man. 
I like that. That is so pretty. So can we do this too thin? No, no. no. Yeah, we're gonna build up coats. It's very forgiving. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is amazing. Isn't that satisfying? Just oh, it's fantastic. This reminds me of being in kindergarten, Mike. It is. Not, not a lot that I do requires much more than kindergarten level. <laughs> Those little paint pyramids come in so handy. And you get those on Amazon? I get these at Walmart and Home Depot. Oh. Yeah, you're right. It darkened up quite a bit, didn't it? Right. From the first time we put it on. Yeah, it just saturates it. It really makes the wood glow. And look at that. You can see right through there. It looks like old glass, like church oh, glass. Yeah, it does. You know what I'm saying? I thought it would look good, but I had no idea it would look this good. Very little sanding is required from here on out. We'll scuff it with 220 and then we'll, uh, we'll do the next coat. Boy, that looks really, really cool. I love it. All right, let's sand these and get ready for the next coat. Here we go. This looks really good after one coat. I, I love it. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I love the, the high gloss. Uh-huh. So you see these little dots and, and stuff like that? That's really normal on your first coat. It's just air trying to escape or little nibs and nubs that present themselves. All we have to do is scuff sand that. It doesn't even have to get really, really flat in this next coat. Honestly, because this Madrone is really dense, I don't think we need more than two coats quick coat. Well, that's why I use Madrone, because I'm dense too. So You're we, dense. We, we get along with each other. <laughs> <laughs> You're dense. <laughs> All right, let's sand it up. So I don't know if I'm doing too much, too light. No, you see with your hands, okay? Okay. So that's what I do. Is oh, I'll those do nubs come right off. Yeah, it's and, and even though you can still see them, yeah. that's going to be totally hidden in the uh, second coat. You see all the drips here on the ends? Yes. We're going to sand those off when we're all done. Okay. No point in doing it right now because they're going to re reproduce this coat. So okay. we'll let this coat happen and then we'll sand off any high points. This is becoming a really cool project, man. Well, I'll tell you what, I enjoy it. I get so excited, I have more, uh, more things in mind. They just keep coming. I find more rotten logs. <laughs> Guys, let us know in the comments below, do you have a rotten log? Hey, it even looks good scuffed. There you go. I've tried wiping down with solvents and that kind of thing. It's really not necessary. Just wiping a dry rag on it does the trick and then you don't worry. You know, sometimes like 91% like isopropyl alcohol, that kind of thing, uh -huh. it can leave a residue. And so sometimes it'll want to repel unless you really break that surface tension. So a dry rag on dust is always... Okay, so don't worry too much about the dust. No, I mean, get it off enough with this, but you don't have to, you don't have to be a clean room type of situation. So I feel a little place where it's still shiny, so I need to hit that again? You know, that's a good question. So you've got little micro scratches. I can see it's more glossy here, but it's also deeper wood. As long as you've scuff sanded, it's really enough. You know, if you have big glossy spots that you didn't ever hit, yeah, you want to rough that up. You create that mechanical bond because there's no solvents in the epoxy, so you're not re-wetting something out or opening back up those pores. But you want that that real tenacious bite. And, okay. and really, if you hit it while it's still tackier within the first 24 hours, you typically don't have to sand at all. But I'd rather err on the side of caution. Right? All right. All right, let's do this. Let's go put another coat on. Dang. Look at that, I like that you can see through this yeah. little crack. Yeah, I noticed that too. I, I didn't notice it until uh, today. That is a blue whale eye. That is the whale eye. That's what my wife calls it, the whale eye. She's accurate. One to one? One to one. Thin to win, one to one. I put a little bit too much B in there uh -huh. because I was showing off. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it back. Pro tip, if you put too much in, put it back. <laughs> This is how we clean our mixing paddle. All right, we're ready. <laughs> I'm jealous of your shelf. I need to make my own shelf. My piece of wood that had a shelf hidden in it? Yeah, it was. It was, it was hidden in plain sight. Somebody was gonna burn this in the fire pit. Wow. I don't know, I think I'm done. I think I'm done too. I, I don't think we need anything on the backside. And it just levels itself out? And yeah, we're gonna torch it. Try to leave my gloves on. So at this point, I took one off to have a clean torch, and the other one, if I need to rub it again, I'm okay. good. What do you think? I love it. <laughs> you know, I, I thought after the first coat it was fantastic, but this just adds a whole nother dimension to it. It does. 
All right, we're gonna let this dry. We'll come back tomorrow, sand off the drips, hand them over, and you get to hang them in the cabin. Guys, did you enjoy this content? Did you? Did you like this? Uh, this has been one of the most fun things I've ever done, Mike. This is fantastic. Do you think they should give us a thumbs up if they liked it? I think you, they should give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Give us a comment below. What was your favorite takeaway from this project? Did you learn anything? And visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you, you got, got this. this. We'll see you on the next video. Okay guys, it's time to play. I'm impatient. I really want to see what this log cabin light fixture is going to look like actually installed. And I know the cabin, it's a long drive and Ken's going to go install his light fixtures, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do that right away. So we're going to mock up a wall, we'll hang a light fixture, we'll put it on a dimmer so that I can adjust the lighting and we're going to see what this looks like right now. Let's do it. was turned into a log cabin lampshade. I'm so glad we mocked this up. Check out the lighting. This is really cool, especially on a dimmer.